Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with a, another Genesis Thoughts video. Today we'll be talking about um, teabagging. I recently got a comment on one of my videos and I'll put it in the top right hand corner of this video, the annotation that you can click on or the link will be in the description. This is a YouTube video that I posted as a game of doubles on Haven that you really should watch. It's a really good game. And it's, yeah, I'll just leave that video to explain itself. If you watch that, though, there's a specific moment in there where I pull off an insanely epic thruster pack ninja. I, I'm not sure if it's technically a ninja, but, um, and then I immediately teabag the guy. One of the comments was, um, I'm not going to mention his name, but don't teabag, it makes you look like a douche, okay? Which is absolutely true. Um, in fact, with my Halo 4 montage, where I thruster pack ninja the guy in the lift on a drift, I actually teabagged him directly after doing that, and I specifically cut that out of the montage. Um, again, you can check out my montage, it's in the description of the video, or it's in the, it's in the top right hand corner of this video as well. Even in that video, I had to cut out, smoothly cut out me teabagging that guy because I did not want that to be in the video. Now. I want to explain some of the methodology and not just my opinions on, on teabagging because I, I think feel like that would be lame. I've thought through this topic a lot in my head. I'm really sorry for this chair. I hope you guys cannot hear that too much. Um, and there is a lot of interesting things that revolve around teabagging. Um, the first off is, the first off fact that you really have to get straight is that most people who teabag online are noobs people who don't really know what they're doing, or, or even more sadly enough, they think they know what they're doing, or they think they're good at the game, and they're teabagging someone for being slightly less, less better than they are. Um, poorly constructed sentence there, but that's how it is. And unfortunately, what this ends up bringing on is this very, very negative outlook on teabagging, and I don't blame anyone or thinking that me, I look like a douche if I teabag or anyone else does because in Halo 3 when I first switched over from computer to console gaming and started playing Halo 3 I got teabagged a lot and in Halo 3 the animation was kind of a, a sickening if you want to put it that way simply because the body would like jiggle up and down while you were teabagging it and it just looked like oh man I want to go get that guy and I actually fell into that trap multiple times of getting this feeling of sort of rage, like, oh, I'm going to go get this guy because he teabagged me. Um, and that is something you really cannot fall into at all. And here's the reason why. The purpose of teabagging is to mentally insert yourself into the enemy's head and crash around and just break up all thoughts of coherency they had, all thoughts of strategy, all thoughts of meaningfulness, all thoughts of calling out or you know thinking about what they're going to do next, strategy, or anything of that nature. That is the purpose of teabagging. The purpose of teabagging is not to assert yourself over an enemy player to say that you're so much better and you're garbage and blah blah blah. That is not, professionally speaking, that is not the purpose. If someone who is good at the game, like I am, okay, who's definitely above average teabags, it is almost always, and this is the case for me as well, it is mainly because you're trying to get into the enemy player's head and divert them from their strategy and make them get mad at you. The reason why you want them to get mad at you is because mad people start making mistakes, just like people who are super afraid start making mistakes or super guilty start making mistakes extreme emotion while doing something as precise as moving control sticks in a very intense first person shooter video game is never a good idea. And that's why if you can exploit that or manipulate the enemy's emotions, you can really screw up their game. It's very, very interesting, the psychology behind it all. But I just want to give you guys a few tips, okay? In this doubles game where Voxel and I are getting kind of destroyed at the beginning of the game up to the, the first half, um, it's all, we're only facing two people. When you teabag, you waste time. I actually remember watching a video of a, of a 
Halo Reach MLG game where Suddeth 2, basically the Justin Bieber of Halo, um, Suddeth 1 and Suddeth 2, they're, they're twin brothers who play Halo, um, who think they're good, basically. And they are probably better than I am. But, um, yeah, they're the Justin Bieber of Halo, I'm just going to say it. Um, he teabags an enemy player, and if you watch the film closely, it actually leads to them losing the game a few seconds later because he was so focused on teabagging the enemy player that he forgot about his flag, which inadvertently led to them losing the game. That is dumb. That's the capital D dumb. You never want to teabag in the midst of a 4v4 competitive game. That's a really bad idea, okay? And it, even in free-for-all, it's really not that worth it unless the person you're teabagging is right below you or above you in score and you just embarrass them in some way, and you're trying to get into their head. Now, the problem with all of this, and teabagging in general, is that it's not a precise science. If you teabag, it doesn't necessarily directly lead to them getting mad and making mistakes. It's not A leads to B. It's emotion. It's very volatile, and it's not something you can trace or track. So, in this gameplay where Voxel and I are are on Haven facing to these two enemy guys, we know, based on their gameplay up until that point, that they aren't that great. We know we can beat them. I, I can say, I, if you go talk to Vox or ask him, I'm sure he will say we can. We could have definitely beaten those kids. And that first initial rush and everything that happened afterwards up until that mid-halfway point of the game where I pull off this epic maneuver and we completely change the game around and end up winning 30-16, to 16, he will tell you that we knew we could beat them that that first part of the game was really unlucky in a variety of other things. How did I know that, though? How did I know that they weren't that great? Because of all the gameplay we saw up until that point. Jetpacking the top mid with a bolt shot, okay? And especially the point where I curve around to top uh, Mohawk and then come, come around on the um, street and start shooting the guy and realizing... He's camping around the corner with a bolt shot, waiting for us to rush around the corner, and Voxel gets two assists with the saw, or I get two assists off of Voxel with the saw. What that means is that they're not that great, especially specifically that player is using the bolt shot. He's not that great. The other player is just super passive. I don't even know. They're not playing as a team. Individually, they're okay. They're above average for sure, but... And, for example, using the bolt shot doesn't mean he's a noob, or using three grenades, like I mentioned in the video, doesn't mean he's automatically bad at the game. It just means that he's relying on it. He, they're relying on bad tactics that are not going to win you a competitive doubles game. And what that means is that they are highly susceptible, way more than a pro player would be, to teabagging or something of that nature. So if I pull off an insanely epic maneuver like that, I'm absolutely going to teabag the heck out of that body and punch it several times because I'm trying to get into that enemy player's head. And I don't know if it worked. Obviously, I don't know the enemy player reactions. But judging on the way the game turned out, I'd say it was a pretty good use. You know, beating them 30 to 16, almost doubling their score is, you know, says something, since we were down 5-0 to zero at the beginning of the game. It says something. You know, I think it did work. But what you have to realize about teabagging is that few people do it correctly. And, I, and this may be a little bit technical for some of you people, but for those of you who are sort of newer to the scene and aren't as familiar with teabagging, it comes in many shape, forms, and fashions. Teabagging can be crouching up and down on someone's body. Okay, and that can be technically called teabagging, obviously. You can also run over somebody's body and punch it, or shoot it a few times and punch it and run away, and that sort of fall lumps into the same category as teabagging, if that makes any sense. So, it is better to run over, shoot someone's body a little bit after they're dead, or punch it, than it is to teabag it, because it wastes less time obviously, and it, you know, you can get into the game faster. Here's another reason why it's teabagging that game, okay? You're only facing two people. 
if we would have lost the game because I had teabagged, or if the score was tied and it was the last kill, I would have never teabagged at that point, ever. The reason why is because it would have wasted precious seconds of time. But at that moment when I did teabag in this game, both enemy players were dead, and they were the only two players in the game. So I just killed off those two players. They're in respawn while I'm teabagging the body. You see what I mean? So if there is any point where you could or should teabag, that is it. Not only is it appropriate and could help at that point, but you can do it without any legitimate consequences. That's what I'm trying to say here, is that it's the right moments to do this type of stuff, okay? It's not that it's right, it's that it can be useful in specific micro-focus situations. But you have to make the call and use the tips and tricks that I've already tried to share with you in this video to make it worth your time or worth your while. For example, teabagging in a big team battle game, Unless the guy was camo sniping at his base the entire game and was on a perfection run, 15 kills, 0 deaths, and you happen to kill him in a super embarrassing way by ninjing him, it's very unlikely that you're going to need a teabag in a big team battle game. Okay? Not only because of, because of the chaoticness of the game, but especially if you're a good player, you're wasting precious seconds you could have used to get more kills towards your score and possibly end up winning the game at the end. But in smaller games... If you recognize enemy players, like if you know their color in Free For All, if you know that the blue player, and that's the only blue player in the whole game, their, their, their player, their score will be highlighted blue in the bottom right hand corner if they're above or directly below you and contesting you for the score, your score obviously. So you can find that player, kill him, and sort of teabag him, get into his head, but only do so if it's really worth worthwhile if the situation presents itself with an open opportunity where you don't really have to execute a few choice maneuvers directly after killing that player. For example, don't teabag if someone's another person is standing right there that you could kill right after that next guy. Go for the next kill. That's where people who are teabagging who are level 10 at, in a Halo 4, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know any of this because you haven't played 27 days three hours, 48 minutes, and 20 seconds of the fracking game, which I have, okay? You don't have 70,000 kills and 31,000 deaths, okay? You don't have that. You cannot teabag without knowing when to appropriately do it, as I've already stated. Again, it's just trying to give you guys, it is not just only your response to the guy who posted on the video, the comment, you're a douche if you teabag. This is for everyone who's ever played any video game, who's run into people who do this. Maybe it's not just teabagging, but it's something else. You have to realize that there are a lot of legitimate strategies, including trash talking, that can be used effectively at certain opportunities, but those are few and far between. And I personally rarely teabag, if ever, in terms of language as well. You guys know from watching our previous videos, I don't curse. I just don't typically participate in those sorts of activities because they lead to high emotional engagement in a specific emotion, anger, you know, uh, envy, rage, I don't know, all these other things. And that's not going to help you be precise and lethal in the game. It's not going to help you do that. If you're about to play a free for all game or 1v1 against someone, you get that sort of clenching nervousness, your heartbeat insanely increases and your palms start to mildly sweat. That's what I'm sure of talking about and trying to avoid. The more you play and the less you participate in these activities that spike your emotional level, the more precise and focused you can get. And that's, that's the goal here. That's always been the goal, that's what, including in my tips and tricks videos. So guys, I hope this video has been useful to, and helpful to you in some way. Um, leave a comment if you want to debate what I said or leave your thoughts or experiences with teabagging and why it wasn't or was useful to you or what, just what your thoughts on this video are. Um, thank you for watching. Like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more or more future Halo content, including Destiny content when the game comes out. And I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording.
Brief note, I'm working on a few videos, including the thruster pack video. It's taking me a little bit, guys. Um, seeing as population count is so low in Halo 4 right now, due to a variety of reasons, it is difficult for me to muster up a huge amount of gusto to punch through and just run, you know, really, really hardcore go after these videos and make them. It takes a long time. I have the clips, I have them right here, but this is not a video I'm going to make very quickly. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm on it, okay? But it's going to take me a little bit. Thank you guys for being patient. I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.